should you consider yourself as a chief medical officer? Should you even think about leadership as a physician? You know, I never even thought that I could be a CMO. I never even thought I could be in leadership at all. But, you know, maybe you have a little curiosity. I did have a little curiosity. And we need to encourage our physicians to get into leadership positions in this day and age. I have a, a physician who's going to talk exactly about that. My name is Dr. Elsie Co. I'm the founder and CEO of Lead Physician Online Leadership Program for Physicians. See, uh, stay tuned so I can tell you about the link about how to get involved in that. I'm also the CMO of American Endovascular and Amputation Prevention. Go to our YouTube channel to subscribe for any future videos that come up. Today, we're talking with James Kravick, and he's the chief clinical officer of Mercy Health, Youngstown and Lorraine. And let me just show you his picture. He, he has written this chapter, okay, on in this book that we are reviewing right now, uh, Chief Medical Officer's Essential Guidebook, which you can now buy on Amazon and also at AAPL. And so what he wrote down on the first chapter is what exactly is a CMO? What exactly do they do? And so uh, he's also uh, been involved as a, a system medical director of the Graduate Medical Education of Bon Secours Med uh, Mercy Health. So let me bring him on board here. James, thank you so much for being here. I, I really appreciate it. You're here to inspire. <laughs> no, thank you for James. having me. Thank you for yeah, having me today. Yeah. James, why did you write this chapter? What's so interesting about, you know, obviously we all got to choose our topic. Why did you choose this topic? You know, as I as I reflected on my role, I have the privilege of overseeing five hospitals, each with a physician leader. One of them is called a chief medical officer. A couple are called vice president of medical affairs or VPMA. And one's a medical director based on size of the hospital. So I get the question a lot. What is a CMO? What does a CMO do? How can I be a CMO? I get that question quite a bit. And so I think as I reflected on that, you know, I thought, well, let me let me put this down into a presentation. So I presented it first, and then it was asked to, to write this in a, in a chapter of the book. And so, you know, I, as I as I think through, that's really the main reason is really to explain it to doctors. We don't get physician training. We don't get physician leadership in our in medical school for the most part. And so, you know, people are interested. That's awesome. What what's the difference between a chief medical officer and a chief clinical officer? Just briefly. Yeah, the chief clinical officer is responsible usually for more than one entity. Whereas the chief medical officer usually has a building or maybe two buildings, and it's usually acute care, a chief, uh, at least in the hospital setting. Um, a chief clinical officer in the health system setting usually is responsible for a building and a medical group and a clinically integrated network or an ACO and maybe recruiting and maybe quality. And there's a few other things that chief clinical officers tend to have on uh, her or his plate as opposed to maybe just a building, which is even maybe more in the weeds than what a chief clinical officer might be. So you're overseeing CMOs? Yeah, my structure, at least in my health system, is the chief clinical officer oversees uh, the chief medical officers who are responsible for a building. Wow. A hospital so maybe, building. Right. So I wonder how many chief clinical officers there are in the, in the, in the U.S. right now. You know, it's it's a it's a new. I, I was named the chief clinical officer in 2016, and there was a an article published right around that time. Is it went a, a new role in physician leadership? So I think it's evolving. Got it. um, the chief medical officer used to be the a the, the main physician leadership role. Now systems call it a chief clinical officer or chief physician executive. Okay, so why should why should doctors even consider being a CMO? Why should they? You know, I think as physician leaders, you know we have the ability to influence change in health systems. We, we learn the medical part, but as a physician leader, we can influence change over the areas we're responsible for. If we know what we're doing and we know how to um, work with doctors, work with nursing, work with administration and finance. Right. And, you know, for somebody who's never done leadership, how do you even start? You know, a lot of it is, is being and showing the interest and really realizing that, not every physician wants to do this. We're all trained in medicine. We're not trained in leadership. So to show that you have interest, to go for le leadership training, be it formal or informal, work with your nursing leaders, work with your hospital presidents, work with your finance leaders, show interest and, and learn from the folks you work with and also learn uh, formally through online training programs or in-person training programs. Yeah. And I would say, you know, even just be a little, if you have that little bit of curiosity, be even more curious, step forward and ask. And, um, you know, this could leadership training can really change your life, both personally and professionally. And the whole burnout would improve too, because now you're more intentional about how you're 
leading your life into your career. So thank you so much. I want to go into the four essential components you have in your chapter. And again, he wrote this chapter in this book, The Chief Medical Officer's Essential Guidebook, and what exactly is a CMO. And he does outline four essential components. I'd like to go over some of that. With no, thanks. The, the, the first really is, is focusing on clinical operations. And clinical operations essentially means that uh, metrics related to physicians and, and nursing and um, areas where the doctor would have more control, things such as uh, C. diff rates, catheter-associated UTI rates, central line-associated bloodstream infections, mm. um, blood utilization, those type of metrics that we need to monitor that are, are very much physician led and physician involved. And so I think that's one of the key areas that the chief medical officer owns to have those conversations between nursing, quality, infection prevention, and the physicians. Yeah, and I think that's a wake up call for even uh, just hospital leaders or uh, administrators who are not clinicians to, uh, to really draw in and help physicians become better leaders and identify those who are interested so that we can have these kind of clinical outcomes that are so essential as we're changing the whole landscape of the, you know, the finances and the reimbursement uh, that's happening. Uh, right I think have, having a partner of not just the chief nursing officer, which is extremely important, but also a partner with the chief financial officer. I've, I've been blessed with some great CFOs that I've worked with, and they are truly part of my triad. Triad meaning the nurse and the finance and the physician. Mm. Understanding finance and operations really will make you a better CMO. I love that triad. I like that. I've always heard of dyads, but not triad. That's great. And also now the second thing that you mentioned is here, case management and throughput. Yeah, we're really make this means working with case management, social work, and the nursing team on length of stay, on, mm. on throughput, realizing that the physician component, every, every time I've studied this, the physician component's about a quarter, right? We know there's nursing home issues. We know there's insurance company issues. We know there's ambulance and transport issues, but there are physician issues. It's not 100%, but it's not zero. So realizing that the physician leader, the CMO, does own the physician relationships when it comes to length of stay. Yes, awesome. Third one you had was medical staff relations. Yeah, I think that's that's related to what we, what we just said, really, with the physician owning those relationships. Awesome. There, we, we know doctors are um, leaders in their own field of patients care, patient care. But when it comes to the formal structure, there are chairman of the department, there's a president of the medical staff, there's section chiefs. And sometimes that's hard. It's hard to rein in a bunch of uh, physicians who have been leaders their, their whole career. Maybe they're leaders of their practices. But now that they come together as an organized medical staff, there must be structure working on behavior issues that you know I think are less these days than in the past, but there's behavior issues. There's um, issues that we need to teach them. And I think that's really important. Awesome. And then you have a, the final is hospital clinical strategy. Yeah, I think that, that, is, that goes back to the, the, the triad, really working with nursing and finance and also really the hospital president saying, what new equipment do we need for as far as maybe robotic surgery or what new GYN procedures should this hospital do? How do we help find a physician to either train her or him or recruit somebody? Um, you know, what kind of cases, case mix index do we need in this hospital? So do we need more complicated surgeries? Should we transfer our patients to more community hospitals if you're a larger hospital? Yep. Yep. That's great. You know, all of this can be very overwhelming listening to this for the first time for somebody who's maybe uh, straight out of uh, fellowship or residency or somebody who's uh, not even thought of it before, how can we dumb it down, not dumb it down, but make it simple uh, for physicians who are just even curious about it? Because uh, I, I would, if, if this were me, I would say, you know, going back 15 years, 20 years, I'd be like, the heck is he talking about? I don't even know what he's talking about. How do I even start? And you, you said, you started by saying, be curious. What was your, what, what steps did you take to get I, to where you are right now, James? You know, I, I was curious and I, in the beginning, I was a full-time clinical role. I was involved as an internal medicine physician, uh, worked as faculty of a graduate medical edu education program. I started off by just volunteering on a few committees. And that, that was as simple mm. as that. I became a, a, a secretary treasurer of the medical staff because no one else else wanted it, not because I was the best candidate. No one else wanted it. I became, I went on a, on a risk management committee. Sounds pretty okay. boring to be honest, but I met a lot of people. I got introduced yeah. to people. I met the hospital CEO. 
who said, you show interest and you, you do a decent job. Can you go on a leadership course? And that was it. He asked me to go on a leadership course that, 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 that our health system developed for physician leaders. And I got some training and that was it. I said, what next? I didn't know what was next. Wow. And as, as things happened, as he needed a medical director of a medical group, he came to me. And, I, and because I had that training and because I showed that interest, and that's really how my leadership journey started. That's so great. Thank you so much for that. I, that's inspiring for people, I'm sure. I wanted to show people again this book. Just get this book if even you're curious. I mean, just reading uh, articles and seeing how, how people did it and, and learning about what these ideas from these, these various clinicians who have written chapters in this book and, and volunteer their time for that. This, this is the link to get to it. I just dumbed it down bit.ly slash CMO guidebook. So if you want to go buy that. Uh, tell us, can we share any personal information that if somebody has a question for you, James, that they can ask? Oh, absolutely. P you know, please contact me via email. Uh, my email is up on the screen and I'd be happy to do my best to get back to you and uh, have further conversations. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. My name is Dr. Elsie Coe. If you have a topic on physician leadership, please reach out to me at info at drlcco.com. Also, join us for our, our upcoming leadership program four-month program online at www.leadphysician.org where you get 24 uh, CMA credits. Any last words for us, uh, James, as we close here? You know, I think it's really important to remember that the physicians are trained in medical care. Whatever specialty we go in through medical school and residency, we're not necessarily trained in leadership. And so it, it does take training. We can't just become a CMO or a medical director just because we want to, or because someone asks us to, there, there it does require some skills and training. And I think that's probably the most important um, piece of advice I would have. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for watching until next time.